Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for all of you who may be visiting with us. Praise the Lord. Five. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for you in Jesus' name. Thank God for all of you who may be watching on YouTube. God bless you also in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for keeping us on this day and allowing us to come together one more time. Amen. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to witness and preach the gospel to this community on another day. Hallelujah. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you may use me to touch somebody's heart today. Amen. With your word. Thank you, Jesus. My God, we thank you. Amen. I pray that the right person may ride by and hear my voice as I proclaim your word on this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Carry my voice in the wind and let others hear. Amen. So that they may be able to have faith in you. Amen. And turn from their wicked ways. Praise the Lord. We give you all the praise and the glory. We thank you for dying on the cross for us. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For every blessing that you've given us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And we ask you. We ask you, Lord. Hallelujah. To touch this word on this morning. Hallelujah. Let me say something to help someone who may be viewing online. Hallelujah. My God, for we want to be a help to your people. Thank you, Jesus. Strengthen someone's faith on this morning. Strengthen their faith in you. Don't let them quit or give up or faint. Hallelujah. My God, but help them to hang in there in Jesus' name. So I pray, Lord, hallelujah, that you'll carry my voice in the wind and take my voice to the hearers that needs to hear the word on this morning in Jesus' name. We thank you and give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans, chapter number five. Romans, chapter number five. Thank you, Jesus. Romans, chapter number five. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you have Romans chapter 5, I want you to find verse number 17. Romans chapter 5, find verse number 17. Praise the Lord to your Facebook and also YouTube. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for you visiting with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Romans chapter number five, beginning at verse number 17. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The scripture reads, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, verse 18, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men. To condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life hallelujah for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Praise the Lord. Let's read that one more time. 
Romans chapter 5, verse 19. All of you viewing us on Facebook and YouTube, God bless you. Pull your Bibles out and follow along with us. Amen. This scripture here, hallelujah, is awesome. Look at verse 19. All of you who can hear me in the community here in Raytown, Kansas City, praise the Lord. Listen to this. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience, hallelujah, of one shall many be made righteous. Praise the Lord. Now, as we know in the scriptures, in the book of Genesis, we see that the reason man is in the state that they are in today with unrighteousness is because of Adam. Praise the Lord. Adam disobeyed God. Thank you, Jesus. Adam disobeyed the instructions of the Almighty. Praise the Lord. And because of Adam's screw up, praise the Lord, many were made sinners. Because of Adam's disobedience, we all are born into sin. Praise the Lord. My God, it's because of what Adam did. But God said, you know what? The first man, Adam, messed things up. I'm going to bring a second man. I'm going to call his name Jesus. He's going to fix things up. Come on and talk to me. Praise the Lord. Adam messed things up, and Jesus came to fix it. Thank you, Jesus. So by the obedience of Jesus Christ, you can be saved today. By the obedience of Jesus Christ, you can be forgiven of all your unrighteousness. You can be set free from all of your sins and transgressions and iniquities. Praise the Lord. Everything, praise the Lord, that you have done in life that's against the will of God, God wants to forgive you. Everything that you've done and you disobeyed the word of God. Jesus wants to forgive you. Praise the Lord. Because it's because of Adam. We're in this mess. If Adam would not have messed up. He'd be living today. Praise the Lord. Because man was going to live forever. Thank you Jesus. But when Adam and Eve messed up. In the garden of Eden. Praise the Lord. My God. Man now has to die. Praise the Lord. But God has made a way for us, praise the Lord, so we can conquer death. We can conquer the grave, praise the Lord. My God, all you got to do is repent, get baptized in Jesus' name, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you have that Holy Spirit, my God, you can now conquer death, praise the Lord. When you have the Holy Spirit, death has no power over you. Praise the Lord. You might go graveyard dead, but one day when Jesus come back to get the church out of this world, you're going to get up out of that grave. Praise the Lord. And show death. Just like Jesus showed his power when he was buried and on the third day was raised again. Hallelujah to God. you going to die one day. You're going to be buried. But when God comes back, you're going to be raised again. Praise the Lord. The coming of the Lord is near. The coming of the Lord is near. You better get right with God or get left when he returns. Praise the Lord. My God, so many people want to walk in unrighteousness. So many people don't even think about God until tragedy hits. Don't wait till tragedy come to call on the Almighty. You can call on him now while he is near. Praise the Lord. You can call on him now while he is near. Call ye upon the Lord while he may be found. Seek for him and you can find him. Knock and the door shall be open. Seek and ye shall find. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You better seek after God. Praise the Lord. Jesus came 
that you might have life and that more abundantly. Jesus came that you shall not perish and go to hell. But he made a way for you to escape the gates of hell. For hell is widening in itself every single day. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, hell with largest herself. Praise the Lord. Anybody that want to go, hell will make room for you. My God. But hell wasn't made for you. Praise the Lord. Hell was not made for you. God wants you to escape the gates of hell. But hell is there for people who are disobedient and will not obey the word of God. Hallelujah. My God, yes, Adam was disobedient and didn't obey the instructions of the Almighty. But thank God for Jesus who wrapped himself in flesh, came and got on the cross, shed his blood and died for you so that you might live and see better days ahead, so that you might live and go to a place of peace and comfort and not wound up in a place of hell and torment. God don't want you to go to hell, so let go of your unrighteousness. God don't want you to go to hell, so let go of all the ungodliness. My God, you got your priorities all mixed up. You need to focus on God and let God have his way in your life and trust him that he will make a way. Trust him that he will provide. Don't let nothing keep you from serving God. Thank you, Jesus. So the scripture here is encouraging us to let us know that the reason man is in the state that they are in today is because of Adam. But I'm so glad that God sent another man by the name of Jesus, hallelujah, in order to be a chief cornerstone for us. My God, somebody who can stand in place, hallelujah, and show us his embrace. Someone who can stand there and wrap us in his arms to let us know that we'll be all right. Somebody who went to a cross and laid down the most precious thing to a person, which is their life. Jesus laid down his life, my God, so that you can be set free. He laid down his life so that you can be forgiven. He shed his blood on Calvary. My God, that showed his love for you. My God, what other person you know would crucify themselves, over themselves up as a sacrifice. My God, so that you can be forgiven. You need to remember what Jesus has done for all of mankind. He laid down his life, shed his blood to show his love. Thank you, Jesus. That blood that was shed years ago still got power today to forgive your sins. Thank you, Jesus. My God, who you think woke you up this morning? Your alarm clock didn't do it. The sunshine didn't do it. If the sunshine coming through your windows woke you up, everybody in the grave would have got up this morning. Praise the Lord. Your alarm clock didn't wake you up. But somebody, praise the Lord, if you was dead, you wouldn't have heard it. If you were dead, my God, that alarm clock would still be ringing right now. But it was God that allowed you and quickened your body and woke you up. Praise the Lord. You have to give him thanks and give him glory for all that he's done for you. My God, yeah, you think your alarm clock woke you up. We say that casually sometimes. My alarm clock woke me up at 6 o'clock, 6.30. But if you were dead and your life was gone, you wouldn't have heard it. Your alarm clock didn't do it, baby. This God who died for you, by the name of Jesus, he gave you another day to see. And thank God we're going to bless his name today. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 5, verse number 20. Moreover, 
the law entered that the offense might abound. What's the offense? The offense is sin. The law entered that sin might abound. The word abound means to exist. The law entered so that sin might exist. What does that mean? The reason we know what sin is today is because God said, thou shalt not. Praise the Lord. That's how you know what sin is. Amen. If God would not have said, thou shalt not, you would not have known what sin was. So the law entered that the offense, which is sin, might abound, might exist. But where sin abounded, where sin existed, grace did much more abound. Praise the Lord. Grace did. That word abound means to exist. Let's read this again and replace the word abound with the word exist. And this will make more sense to you. Verse 20. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Again, we're going to place the word abound with exist so it means a little bit more to you. Better clarification. Verse 20 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, might exist. But where sin existed, grace did much more exist. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The reason for grace, praise the Lord, God giving us another chance, grace, favor that we don't deserve, favor that we don't deserve, grace, praise the Lord. Sin existed, but God said where sin existed, grace did much more exist. There's enough grace to cover all your sins. Praise the Lord. That's what that means. There's enough grace to cover all your sin. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how you've done it. And I don't care who you did it with. If you got sin, God got grace. Hallelujah. Long as you're still living, you got another day in order to get your life together with the almighty Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 21, Romans 5 and 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't care what you've done in life, good people. Raytown, Kansas City, Facebook, YouTube. I don't care what you've done in life. There's enough grace to cover your sins. You ain't been too bad for God to save you. You ain't done too much bad stuff that God don't care about you. The book of Peter says that it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter number 3. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter chapter number 3 and verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 9. The word says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Praise the Lord. It's not God's will for you to die and go to hell. That's not Jesus' will. His will is that you come to repentance. You hear me, Raytown? Kansas City? It is God's will that you repent. That means to turn from your unrighteousness. That means to turn from every ungodly thing that you're doing outside the will of God. Praise the Lord. Some of you can't help it. You have to sin.
because you don't have the Holy Spirit. But if you repent, get baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. But look at the love of God. Although you've been bad, oh yeah, you should have been dead a long time ago. But God's grace, hallelujah, God's grace and his keeping power has kept you here. Thank you. My God, when you deserve to be in the grave, when you deserve to be in hell, God's grace is why you're still here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. There's a beautiful song I love called God's Grace by Luther Barnes. Amen. And his lyrics said, how did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Praise the Lord. If you really want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. So many started with me. Praise the Lord. But I'm still here. Why? Because of God's grace. High school friends, college students that I was in playing sports with, passing away, getting shot, health issues. Praise the Lord. But I'm still here. Why? Because of God's grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Family members, gone. Heart issues. Praise the Lord. Taking them out. Health issues. Taking them out. Praise the Lord. But I'm still here. Why? God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. People going through heart failure and heart issues. But I'm so glad my heart is set on Jesus. Amen. I don't have a heart issue. Amen. I'm not talking physical now. I'm talking spiritual. I don't have a heart issue. Praise the Lord. My God, my heart is set on God. My heart is set in Jesus. Praise the Lord. My God, the ones, praise the Lord, people going through spiritual heart failure. Spiritual heart failure. Because their heart is not set on God. Their heart is set in the world. Their heart is set on other material things. But when you, praise the Lord, fix your heart, praise the Lord, and set your direction, and your heart is fixed in Jesus, your spiritual heart issues is gone away. You won't have heart failure. Thank you, Jesus. My God, but you got somebody, my God, who gives you a healthy heart. Praise the Lord, a healthy relationship. That's what I'm talking about. A healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. But when your heart is set on God, you're going to have the devil trying to attack you. And I'm going to call that a heart attack. Praise the Lord. That's a heart attack. Your heart is set on serving God. The devil is trying to attack you to get you to turn your back on God. That's a heart attack. My God, but I'm so glad I got a healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to encourage you to pray a little more. My God, so your faith can be strengthened in the Lord. I want to encourage you to pray a little more so your relationship with God can grow. I want to encourage you to pray a little more. Then you won't fear some of the things that you fear. I want to encourage you, right Town, Kansas City, to pray a little more. My God, because a lot of things can be fixed with prayer. I know, I know, I know. I know what prayer can do. Hallelujah. My God, prayer. My God can heal the sick. Prayer can open doors for you. Prayer can get your body healed. Prayer can keep sicknesses away. Prayer. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to pray and not faint. Pray and don't give up. Pray and hang in there. Pray and keep on praying. Don't stop praying, but you hang in there. Keep walking with God. Don't lose faith. Sometimes life might get a little shaky, but you pray and God will smooth it out. Sometimes the mountain may get a little rough, but pray and God will bring down the mountains. My God, when
when you're walking through the valley, my God, things are coming against you. Sickness coming against you. You in the valley, the valley of death. My God, but pray, and there's a lily in the valley. God will fill the valley, my God, and help you out. Don't give up. Raytown, don't give up. Shopping at Family Dollar, don't give up. Watching your car across the street, don't give up. Listening to me on YouTube or Facebook, don't give up. Keep your faith in God. Keep praying. Hang in there. God loves you. He gave you grace. That's why you're still here. He gave you grace. That's why you're still breathing. He gave you grace. That's why you're still walking around. Because of God's grace. How did I make it this far? Hallelujah. It was because of God's grace. How did I make it through the years? It was because of God's grace. You had some close calls with death. You had panic attacks, heart attacks, heart failure, medical issues, COVID got you, the flu got you, but you're here because of God's grace. Many people you know have passed away. Co-workers passed away. Family members, dead, praise the Lord, friends, gone, passed away, but you still here. Why? Because of God's grace. You need to walk with God for your children's sake. My God, because when you start walking with God and have a healthy relationship with him, that relationship can spew out on your children. Your children will then understand what it means to walk with God, to pray with God. What church is for? Relationships with God. Praise the Lord. It'll be healthy for them. Thank you, Jesus. What the scripture says in the book of Acts, turns to Acts chapter number two. We'll get ready to close out here. But you know, the Holy Spirit is something for your children. It's something for you, your children, your grandchildren, and everybody else who's afar off. God wants a relationship with them and you. And you can save a generation of people if you choose to walk with God the Bible way. Why do I say the Bible way? Because there's so many other ways people are going. You got to have your walk with God according to the scriptures. Praise the Lord. Yes, we serve Jesus, who is God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. He's not just some prophet as uh, Muslims think. They think he's just some kind of prophet, my God, just like Muhammad was. Praise the Lord. That ain't the Jesus I serve. The Jesus I serve, he is God Almighty. He is the one who stood out on nothing and said, let there be light. Jesus Christ is the one in Genesis, my God, who said, created the heavens and the earth. My God and said, let there be fish and fowls in the air. And it was so and he saw that it was good. He said, let there be a light. And there was light. And he saw that the light was good. That's Jesus, baby. That's the one I serve. But families, parents, guardians, praise the Lord. Uncles, aunties, praise the Lord. I encourage you, have a relationship with God. And you can affect your family. You can affect your family members. Your children can even walk with God. I don't care if they've grown up now. You can still change your life and have an impact on them. Praise the Lord. My God. This Holy Spirit is for you and your children and your grandchildren and anybody else so far off. Let's read what the scripture says. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 and 39. This is the plan of salvation. If you want to be saved, the Bible does not say lift your hands and accept the Lord as your personal Savior. And you saved. There's no Bible for that. If you want to be saved, you must obey this scripture that I'm about to read to you. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. If you want to be saved, the Bible does not say 
Pray this prayer with me and you'll be saved. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Be ruler of my heart. Come in and forgive me and save me now in Jesus' name. And if you've just prayed that prayer, you're now saved. Nobody in the Bible ever did that. That's a lie. A sinner's prayer. Nobody ever got saved in the Bible by a sinner's prayer. None of the apostles told anybody, just lift your hands and accept the Lord as your personal Savior. Nobody in the Bible taught that. That's a lie. Accepting the Lord as your personal Savior and you saved. That's a lie. What does the Bible say? Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. They asked men and brethren, what shall we do? In verse 38, Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you want the Holy Spirit, this scripture tells you how to receive it. He said, repent. That's a fancy way of saying, cut your mess out. Let go of your sin. Turn from sin and walk with God. Repent. Repent is a fancy way to say, have a change of mind, which then will result in a change of lifestyle. Turn from your unrighteousness. Repent. So in order to be saved, he said, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is for something. It's for the remission of sin. Praise the Lord. You must repent. That's to turn from your sins. The next thing, get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's going to wash away your sins. Every sin that you've ever committed in your life can be forgiven if you have an act of obedience and being baptized in the name of Jesus. Some of you may say, I've been baptized already. Let me testify to you. I was baptized at a Baptist church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And they baptized me in titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and dunked me under the water. If you've been baptized in titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you got the wrong baptism. You need to be baptized in the name of the one that died for you. And what's that name? Jesus. You must be baptized in the name of the one that shed his blood for you. What's that name? Jesus. If you've been baptized in titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you've been baptized incorrectly. Nobody in the Bible ever did that. The apostles all baptized, calling the name of Jesus Christ. The apostles baptized, calling the name of the one that died for them. There's power in that name. Amen. We pray in the name of Jesus. Cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Amen. People are healed in the name of Jesus. You pray over your food in the name of Jesus. You end all your prayers in the name of Jesus. You, when you hurt you call on the name of Jesus. Why? The name of Jesus got power. So take that same tongue that just cast out devils. Take that same tongue that just healed somebody and get baptized in that same name. Jesus' name. People got a problem with the baptism in the name of Jesus. Then why do you pray in his name? Why do you preach in his name? Amen. Why you got faith in his name? Preachers are denying the water baptism in Jesus' name. And that's the same name they use when they're praying for people. I don't understand it. It's the same name that has power. And I got scripture to back up what the apostles did. They called the name of Jesus. I went back to my preacher at that Baptist church and I told, I asked him, why did you baptize me that way? And after a biblical conversation, he looked at me and my brother and he said, well, I've been baptized in this way for so long and I'm not going to change. That's pride. People see that you're right biblically and don't want to change because of pride.
because he knew he would have to baptize all those people in this church again. So I walked out and never went back. If you've been baptized at a Baptist church, you've been baptized incorrectly. You've been baptized at a Catholic church, you've been baptized incorrectly. You've been baptized at a Methodist church, and they said, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you've been baptized incorrectly. No Bible for it. You got to have Bible for what you do. Scriptures for what you do. Amen. Let's look and see what, G what Peter said. He said, repent. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why is the baptism in Jesus' name so important? Because it's for something. It's for the remission, the forgiveness of sin. The baptism in Jesus' name is for something. It's to forgive every sin that you've ever committed in your life. Facebook, YouTube, if you're listening, I don't care if you're the biggest homosexual in America. Get baptized in Jesus' name, God will forgive you. You can be a murderer, God will forgive you. Get baptized in his name. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're a drunkard, God can forgive. You're an adulterer, a fornicator, a smoker, God can forgive. It just takes an act of obedience on your part. Get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and it's for something. The scripture says it's for the remission of sins. That means it's for the forgiveness, the removal of sin. Raytown, Kansas City. There's a message for you today. If you want to be forgiven, it takes an act of obedience. Obey Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. And I don't care what you've done in life, God will forgive. That's why he came and shed his blood. That's why he died on the cross for you. To show you that he will forgive you. Amen. His blood was shed for the forgiveness of sins. That's Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28. His blood, he said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for many for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of sins. So you go and get baptized in Jesus' name, God will forgive every sin that you've ever committed. And if you repent, repent means to turn from your sins. Salvation deals with sin. There was three things he said. Repent, get baptized in Jesus' name, and you'll receive the Holy Spirit. Repent is you turning from sin. The baptism washes away the sin. And the Holy Spirit gives you power over the sin so you don't go back to it again. Amen. Amen. Salvation deals with sin. For you who may be watching... Uh, TBN Network and listening to these lying preachers, amen they'll sit there and tell you just accept the Lord as your personal savior you ain't dealt with none of your sins, they just have you raise your hand and say, Lord I accept you into my heart, be ruler of my life, amen nobody got saved like that in the Bible, praise the Lord nobody again we have to have scriptures Thank you, Jesus. We must have scripture for the things that we do. Amen. So back to what we were reading earlier, Romans 5. I want to leave you with this, and we're going to close. There's enough grace to cover all your sins. Amen. He said the law entered that sin might exist. Praise the Lord. But where sin existed... Grace did much more exist. Praise the Lord. There's enough grace to cover all your sins. Thank you, Jesus. All of you watching us on social media, Facebook and YouTube, God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, go to Spotify. You can find our podcast on Spotify under the same name, New Ransom Jesus Church. 
We got Raytown, Kansas City. I am Pastor Brandon. Amen. We're bringing our services outside to you today. Amen. Hopefully to plant a seed of the word of God in you that one day it may be watered and God can give the increase. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're here on Sundays at 11 a.m. and on Tuesday and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Come out and visit with us in the name of Jesus Christ if you find the time to do so. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And this Sunday, one announcement, this Sunday coming up, amen, Sunday the 8th, we will not be here. Amen. We'll be going to Illinois for a fellowship service. Thank you, Jesus. So next Sunday, we will not be here. We'll put a sign on the door and update our website with that information as well. Thank you, Jesus. So if you can make it on Tuesday and Wednesday night this week for Bible study, come on by. If you can't, we'll be back next Tuesday and Wednesday night for Bible study in Jesus' name. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Amen.